And uh, here you can just sort of see there's a deletion. That's uh, something occurring on chromosome 20. And uh, I just uh, I'll go fast here. Anyways, it's a gene which is expressed in the central nervous system. So you can see you've just got one case. Well, how do you know it's the cause of it? <laughs> but uh, the answer is in most, uh, when you get a deletion, if you just take the average person, he has not got a deletion uh, or a change which isn't present in the parent. So if you see something appearing, maybe it's due to autism. What you'd like to do is find a large number. Just repeat. And uh, here's another one. This is a protein, again, expressed in parts of the, the brain. And uh, this one, uh, and I should have autism in the children are generally uh, highly uh, mentally retarded. Okay. Or the, the classical autism was. Okay. And just sort of a summary. And uh, then I'll go to familiar autism. And this. Uh, is rather creepy. Okay, it's creepy in the, the following sense that uh, 50 years ago there was a psychiatrist at the University of Chicago, Brutal Bethelheim, who studied autistic children, and he said the cause of autism was that the mothers were emotionally cold and didn't give the warmth, and so the children, uh, the cause of autism was just bad behavior by the mothers. And this was accepted. And so uh, women with autistic children bore the burden not only of a child that couldn't return their affection, but that they were the cause of it. Now, that was given up about 20 years ago. And then it was uh, sort of generally believed that the, uh, the parents' behavior had nothing to do with it. Now, there's a psychologist at uh, Cambridge University, Simon Baron Cohen, who some of you may have heard. He writes of the male mind and the female mind, a politically incorrect statement. Uh, but that the male mind, uh, which is found in uh, many women, is people who like to systematize, who like mathematics. Whereas the f female mind is uh, people who uh, uh, like social interactions, uh, are empathizing with other people, caring people. So systematizing and caring people. And there are many more males who are systematizers uh, than, uh, than women are systematizers. Okay. So he identifies these things by giving you a, a, a self-assessment test. You answer 20 questions about yourself, and then you can be put into these two categories. And it's, it's more accurate than you would think. Okay. Now, it turns out that when he looks at the, the parents of autistic children, that the mothers are more systematizers than on the average. And the fathers are. So that, you know, and then, okay. So the, the sort of nasty conclusion from this is that too much mathematical ability is bad for your children. <laughs> so, if you're really bright in math, you know, a man, marry for, you know, beauty, yeah. not friends. <laughs> okay? So, you know, they, I know everyone laughs, but when you get down to it, it's nasty. Okay? <laughs> because, uh, you know, there's sort of Rumors, you know, that more autistic children are born to MIT graduates. There's more autism here in Silicon Valley. Okay. Probably true. Okay. Now, how does the male mind arise? Uh, Simon Baron Cohen has pretty good data that it's the fetal testosterone 
that if you get too much, t a certain high level of testosterone in sort of the third month of development, that leads to the male mind. And uh, he hasn't shown that that leads to autism, but he's been following, he takes amniotic fluid and then he follows the women afterwards. And sees that those which had high testosterone, and then when he does the, uh, the measurements, uh, that basically uh, it leads to uh, the male mind. Okay. So really what we're trying to do, and I will uh, stop in a few minutes, is uh, uh, that autism, because the brain is so complicated and what we've shown is due to a lot of changes and a lot of different genes, not just one. But uh, there's something strange which we haven't yet found of why it's in, in males more than in females. And really, what is it that's transmitted from, you know, uh, the parents? What genes really predispose you to that? So, uh, knowing, uh, you know, friends with uh, autistic children, uh, where the women are really highly intelligent, uh, I think if you'd ask them, well, would they have, you know, taken a test? <laughs> to not have such a child, they'd probably say yes. Uh, so I think it's, uh, you know, uh, that autism may be to intellectuals what uh, uh, HIV was to the homosexual community. Something which you really pay to take a big interest in and get the answers as fast as possible. And uh, hopefully decrease the incidence of autism. Now on the, you know, good side, if you can identify sort of high intelligent autistic children early on and give them special schooling, you can help them and many go to college and, uh, you know, there are probably some in this room. So many uh, uh, can become functional, but in many cases, uh, uh, it's a very hard burden to bear, both particularly for the people who have the disease and not. So, sorry to conclude, uh, uh, autism is just one of many other things. We're now trying to, you know, be serious in understanding schizophrenia and a whole variety of things. So, I think we'll begin to uh, really uh, understand sort of the uh, mental differences between people and personality differences and we'll begin to understand it. I think what we will end up by doing that is uh, uh, we'll probably be a better world in the, the sense that uh, we'll understand when people sort of go to another part of the room and don't want to socialize that maybe they don't have any choice. And so we'll be much more uh, to people who seem to be awkward, uh, realizing uh, uh, that they were born awkward. It wasn't just that, uh, you know, they didn't want to be with their bigger brother or little sister or something like that, that, uh, uh, that they didn't really